Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here, and this is going to be another guitar video. I skipped the unboxing, so... Alright, so I'm not too sure if you guys have seen these on eBay or other YouTube videos about this guitar. This is an NK guitar. I believe it's out of China. And these are headless. So, let's go over this guitar a little bit before I start talking about, uh, you know, too much of anything else. So, you have an ash body. This body looks like it has a top on it. It is not a top. This is basically just painted. And you can see the wood grain travel through into what has not been painted. The body is a two-piece body. Right over here is the seam, if you can see that with my finger in the way, right there. They use a piece of wood for a back plate cover. Four screws bolt on neck. Maple neck, which has also been stained on this one, but you can get it without stain maple fretboard on this comes with a set of nines and i want to say that this top piece here is a piece of um uh, ebony that's on the top the knobs on this guitar are rosewood and also you have a push and pull switch to change these humbuckers into single coils three-way switch and your tone the bridge on this thing is pretty interesting I've never never came across any guitar with a bridge quite like this but all in all it plays good it feels good the neck is really nice on this thing uh, the frets when I got this thing they had a little bit of a haze to them they were a little on the dull side so I ended up putting a set of tens on here this guitar comes with nines and i polished the frets before i ended up uh, putting new strings on i did check the frets to see if they were uneven with each other if i had to do a fret leveling job and lo to behold uh not on this guitar no fret work was needed other than a polishing the fret ends on this thing are really nice they're not bad at all uh all in all for the price of this guitar it's not too bad now you can get there's quite a few different colors that you can get you can get the whole thing finished or you can get just fogged in around this edges without paint or stain on the fretboard or on the back of the neck the fret markers on this guitar are solid black fret markers but you can also get them to where they're glow in the dark the side fret markers these are glow in the dark now on the switches, which is kind of nice, you can see there's a little ring around the inside of it. And uh, they're three pieces of wood glued together. Also, they have a set screw on them, so you can remove these things pretty easily. I think they're, they're pretty nice. I mean, they actually make it look pretty good. Three-way switch. I think I said that before, right? Probably. I don't care. I'll say it again. Three-way switch. Now... This guy here is pretty fucking interesting, as you can see. It's got it's a roller uh, saddles on this guitar, but the way you tune it up is basically you have a magnetic little crank here, and you set it in a hole, and you kind of turn it either direction of whatever you need to do. Uh, you can also turn these by hand if you need to, kind of like a fine tuner on a Floyd, Floyd Rose. Now, the one thing that I noticed with this guitar, which was a little bit of a pain in the ass, let's see which way is this going here, there you go, is changing the strings. It's not too bad, but it's bad enough to where it, eh, it's kind of a pain in the ass. So, up at the top, as you can see, the ball ends go into this side of the neck. You're going to have to get like a small jeweler screwdriver or something to wedge the string upward a little bit to where you can get over the nut. Now this does have a bone nut on it. Go back.
back over here. Run your string through, slide it all the way back here. Measure about eh, maybe a half inch past the total bridge. And there's a little tiny hole that is inside of here that you would put the string into and then start cranking it. Now you have to be careful because I've noticed on the uh, high E string that the it wants to slide out. So I ended up putting it, the string a little bit further into the hole so it kind of sticks out a little bit. Not enough to like touch anything. So on uh, three of the strings, that's kind of what I did. The wound strings, you don't have to. They're, they're pretty much uh, locked in place by themselves. But you just crank it up until it starts to, you know, get into the tuning. Now, the one thing I did notice with this guitar is I did put a flat level on top of the neck to kind of find out, you know, where the saddles are, you know, as far as because I have the low E and the high heat, high E, sorry, basically all the way down to the bridge plate. And the action height's a little bit on the high side from where I want it to be, but if I put a shim underneath the neck to kind of tilt that up, I'll have some adjustment, more adjustment over here. Now, these other saddles, they are, um, you can adjust them. There, there are two set screws, one on each side of the saddle back here. And that was probably a little hard to see because it's black. If I give it some light, maybe it'll show a little bit more. There you go. So there's two set screws here, and you raise and lower your saddle with those. To set the intonation, right underneath the string, there is another set screw that you would turn and you could slide your saddles forward and backwards. And what's nice about having the rollers on this, these saddles is that uh, you can move these forward and backwards without having to loosen up the strings. And uh, they don't slide real easy. You have, you'll have to put a little force behind them to get them to move. But it intonated pretty damn well for where I have it sitting right now. And it worked out pretty good. Like I said, the guitar sounds pretty good as far as um, like metal goes for high distortion. It sounds really good. Clean, doesn't sound bad at all. You do get a little bit of a buzz when you go ahead and turn it to a single coil. You get a little bit of a buzz coming from the pickups. And what comes with this guitar? Well, I wasn't really expecting it, but it did say in the description that it comes with a gig bag. So it's not too bad. It's a nice... Uh, canvas gig, gig bag. It is padded a little bit, embroidered NK guitars, and uh, it's pretty nice. It's not too bad. It's clean. You have a neck lock strap right there, and this also comes with tools for setting it up. You have your wrench for your your Allen key for doing your um, your neck. Uh, you have a, another wrench that kind of fits. No, it doesn't fit in there. Hmm. Don't know where that one side goes, but anyways, this is probably one of those multi-cheap tools that you can pick up at Harbor Freight or something like that. Also comes with two other Allen keys for your bridge. Now, some people were saying that the setting up the neck on this thing, that they had problems where this thing was like on an angle and shit. Uh, it pretty much slides right in there and it works. It's got a two-way truss rod inside of here, so you can go forward and backward with it. It does come with a card, pretty large card, uh, for just you know minor adjustments and setup for this thing. And uh, it doesn't really get, go into like action height and shit like that for how high or how low. It really doesn't give you too much information as far as how much bow to put into the neck. So it's kind of yeah, I wouldn't say useless, but it is information that doesn't have specs on it to set things up with. I have this thing at 12,000's bow relief, and uh, like I said, I got a pair of 10's uh, on here right now. I polished up the frets so they're, they're nice and shiny. I was very surprised that these frets did not need a leveling on there. This does have a bow nut on it. Um, seems to be holding in tune fairly well it's not too bad at all now your output jack is right on the side over here so when you're playing it you know it's facing upwards a little bit I don't know if some people like that or not but I really don't care for it, as long as it's not in the way of my leg or anything this thing is very comfortable 
to play without a, a guitar strap on it. Uh, there's no headstock on it, so you don't have to worry about doing a nosedive on you. And it's very lightweight. This guitar is doesn't weigh much at all. I can't give you an actual weight on it. I could probably go look at the box on this thing. The finish on here is just a uh, flat finish. There's no gloss to it at all. And you could feel the wood grain in the body of the guitar. And I kind of like this. this. This reminds me of the Ibanez guitar that I have with the flat finish on it. You can feel the grain, see the grain really well. It just, I like it. I like it a lot. It's very nice. This is the blue fade. Now, when you look at the pictures online and you look at the picture or the actual guitar in front of you, on the picture, this looks a lot darker in this area, and maybe it might on this camera as well, but it is not as light as this, but it is a lot lighter over here than it is on the pictures on eBay, And uh, but all in all, I'm really happy with it. It's not, uh, it's designed well, it plays pretty good damn good, uh, it sounds good, at least to me, and I'm a beginner, so, you know. Some of the guitars will have this highlighted or NK logo, and some of them don't. They do have a serial number on the back of them. That's what the serial number is on this one. Nice flame maple going down the neck, matching the same color as the body. And again, this is very, very light compared to a, you know, a Les Paul or, you know, I don't know what a, I don't have too many like, like Fender Strats or, or I don't have any Fender Strats. Not too sure how much they weigh, but I would say my Ebenez weighs more than this. So there you go. A little bit of not so much of an unboxing, but, you know, a new toy, something to play around with, test out. Now let's get into another part of this video. And this part of this video is going to be for a friend, Mr. Zip, and uh, a little bit of explanation of how to kind of like fog in and blend in some finishes. So hello once again. Yes, I'm cutting off the top of my head. I'm trying to make myself look like I have a flat top. Is it a flat top? Hmm. Anyways. All right, so Zip is doing a headstock on his guitar, and uh, it looks like a Schecter. And he wants to basically um, save the logo. Half of it's still painted. The other half he had to sand down to do a repair. Now, there's a few tricks I learned from the body shops uh, of how to kind of like blend in paint and stuff. And one of them was... Uh, they have a material, it's a foam rubber material, and it has a sticky side of it. It's like a little strip of some type of adhesive on it. And it's about the size of a dime, okay? And it comes in a big spool, and you basically pull out what you need, and you stick it to wherever you're going to be doing your repairs on automotive side. When you don't have anything like that, what can you use? Well, next best thing is tape. So how do you do this? Well, what you would do is you get a little bit wider of masking tape than what this is. Okay, this is basically just the standard basic uh, width of normal masking tape. All right. And let me see. Do I have a roll down here? Yeah, I do. All right. So I do have something that's a little bit wider. As you can see, you can see the difference. Let me open this up. If I can open it up. I'll show you a little trick on, on how to blend in paint or blend in uh, uh, a finish to where you can get it to kind of match a little bit without having to notice too much of a, a difference. Now, the body shops, all right, like I said, they use some type of a cord that's made out of foam that has a little bit of a adhesive on it, and it's about the size of a dime as far as diameter goes. All right, so you would take what you would need all right, of masking tape and roll it, put it like around, uh, let's see, make it easy. Uh, yeah, what is this? It's a pencil that has some type of Christmas shit on it. All right, shorten this up a little bit. Put it around a pencil. 
you can get it to stop sticking around your fingers. And make yourself that tube. All right. Now don't flatten this out. Don't you know? Don't do anything to make this flat and leave it kind of the way it is. I have to put this pencil back in because it's kind of unraveling itself. It's not willing to. This tape is not willing to stick to itself. All right, that's better. All right. So there you have a tube. All right. And what you want to do with that tube? I'm going to use this battery backup for electronics and cell phones as say the headstock. So you sanded down half of the headstock zip. This side is clear. This side is the side that you worked on and did your repair on. So what you want to do is right where you fogged in, right where you fogged in the sanding to where the clear is, you take this tube and you put it right on top of that area. Don't put pressure on it. Now the bigger the tube, the better. All right. So if you can find something type of tape that's a little bit big, bigger, see it's not coming off. It's sticking to it. When you spray your black on it, you want to go with light coats and just you know mask this side off completely. Uh, what you want to do is fog it in. Keep putting light coats on there, fogging it until you match the color that you got on the other side of the headstock. And sand the whole headstock down and then clear it after you remove this. Now you want to, you might have a little bit of a line over here, but it's not going to be much. Like I said, if you fog in the paint, it's not going to create a sharp line that you're really going to have to work on to get rid of. We're having this like this, it just makes like a very shallow, very small line on there. And after you sand it down, even if you use uh, gloss paint and you're able to buff it, it should blend in without seeing too much of a line between the two areas. So if that helps you out, Zip, uh, great. Like I said, you're going to need some wide masking tape to do this with. And see if you can get it, like, kind of roll it up to about the size of a dime. The bigger the tube is, the less paint is going to go underneath it. So as you're fogging it in. So hopefully that helps you out, Zip. Um, enjoy. You guys have a good one. And I will see you all later.